on, let's have a song for poor old Harry. Oh, He's poor. fed up and far from home. Oh, Come on, Joe, you know the one I mean. She's a lassie from Lancashire, just a lassie from Lancashire. She's a lassie that I love here. Sarah's a lassie from Lancashire, all right. I know her well, because she's typical of all those other lassies who live in the industrial south of the county. What does a Yorkshireman know about it? Aye, you may well ask. But the answer's simple. I've lived in Lancashire for most of my life, and I wear ever such a pale pink rose in my buttonhole most of the time. Except, of course, when Yorkshire play Lancashire. Then it's a bit tricky-like to make up my mind. But back to Sarah. Sarah works in a mill like thousands of others, but she doesn't wear clogs and shawl anymore. A scarf round her head, certainly, but no clogs and no shawl. Talking of these scarves, I often wonder how hat shops make a living around here. No one seems to wear them. Oh, sorry, lady. No offense. Maybe Sarah lives in Oldham hard by Manchester, where Pitt and Mill live side by side. The big square mills with their tall chimneys are apparently all built to the same design. The stacks tower above everything, belching out smoke and dirt, which blackens all it touches. The first thing that strikes a traveler from more rural areas is the pitch blackness of things, even the churches. Where there's muck, there's money, they say. Certainly there's muck in plenty in South Lancashire. The houses are the same wherever you go, be it Salford, Bolton, or Blackburn, or anywhere else. Memorials to the misery and suffering which the Industrial Revolution brought to this country. The children play in shut-off streets, robbed of the green freshness which should be their birthright. But let's get back to Sarah, our lassie from Lancashire. After all, it's what she's used to. And as she walks back from the mill to her little home, she will be thinking not so much of her surroundings as of Harry and the things they will do when he gets back home. She will have no eyes for some of the wonders around her, like Barton Bridge, where the canal is carried across the entrance to the docks on a swinging aqueduct. Barges pass above the main waterway. Then the gates close, and the whole thing turns to let the big ships go by. The docks, by the way, are said by some to be Manchester's answer to Liverpool. Was Manchester to be dependent on Liverpool men to ship her goods? Not blooming likely. She'd build her own docks, even if they were inland and build them she did in no uncertain manner. But these things are of little interest to Sarah. Her mind is ahead, ahead to holiday times, ahead to Blackpool. Blackpool, where the tired workers, fed up with the blackness of their lives, let themselves loose in a whirl of garish color and jollity. Blackpool is ugly, Blackpool is vulgar. Let the clever ones say what they like. Blackpool is life with a capital L to millions of industrial workers, when the savings of a year's toil are blued in in one or two glorious weeks, yes, or even less. Perhaps, however, Sarah prefers the comparative quiet of Morecambe. While she's there, we'll pay a visit to the little church at Haysham, 
and look down over the wide bay. In the churchyard are some Saxon graves, cut in the rocks by ancient craftsmen, following the shape of the bodies they were to receive. Apart from Wakes Week, Whitson is one of the biggest holidays in Sarah's year. Come Whit, Sarah will probably join the crowds in Manchester and watch the religious processions through the streets. Walk is certainly a colourful spectacle as children, bands and grown-ups process to church. Or Sarah may go to Liverpool and see the beautiful new cathedral. Or visit the busy docks where great liners come and go to far away and romantic places of which she can only dream and hope one day to see. But if Harry has managed to get home, she will probably get her bike out and pedal away to that other Lancashire. The Lancashire of lake and hill. A Lancashire so far removed from the industrial south that very few people can believe that it is all in the same county. Down south, people often say to me, Coniston, Windermere, they're not in Lancashire. Don't talk so daft, lad. But they are, you know. True, we share Windermere with Westmoreland, but who cares about that? Sarah and Harry will probably cycle round, catching charming glimpses of the lake as they do so. There is a little town not far away called Hawkshead. Hawkshead is consciously aware of its antiquity and its connection with the great. It is, however, nonetheless attractive for knowing its attractions, so to speak. Here Wordsworth spent his early life, learning his lessons at the grammar school, where children still enjoy playtime as much as the poet must have done in his young days. Nearby, he found lodgings in Anne Tyson's cottage. You know, it must have been a peaceful spot in the days before the mechanised invasion of trippers. I prefer to think of it as it was in the 1800s, much as it was 400 years previously, surrounded by lovely scenery, unmarred by cafes, souvenir shops and petrol pumps. Behind us are the Pennines, the backbone of England, separating Yorkshire from Lancashire, and just as well they do, otherwise the Wars of the Roses might still be going on. One way from county to county is through the Trough of Boland, a lovely, awe-inspiring road, and by the side is a stone which marks the dividing line between the red and the white. I were in the county of my birth. And I'll let you into a little secret. We've got a song too. And it's about one of our lasses. And many a man in other parts remembers that his girl's a Yorkshire girl. And by gum, she's a champion. Would you like to hear it? Well, come on, lads. Give us a tune. My girl's a Yorkshire girl. As you can see, Rose too works in a mill, around Bradford Way. But while Sarah makes cotton, Rose will be making woolens. As for her environment, well, there's not much to choose between a Lancashire mill and a Yorkshire mill. Uh, that's providing you don't come from either county. I'm neutral, I'm staying out of the argument. The same smoky atmosphere, the same tall chimneys, the same flat-fronted houses. Iron ore is found in large quantities in the north, and the loaded railway trucks take it to the big centres of heavy industry, like Sheffield and Rotherham. The huge steelworks make the cities just as black and even blacker than Lancashire. Here in these towns is the very heart of our industry, where the huge machines roll and press great chunks of white-hot metal. Steel, steel, steel. The unending cry goes on and unendingly the great mills of Yorkshire heat and 
roll and press and hammer for the markets of the world. Rose, working in her mill, will be oblivious to the heartbeats of heavy industry. She will be looking forward to her holidays in Scarborough. Yorkshire lads and lasses like a gay time on holiday, but in the main, they don't go at it quite as vigorously as they do on the other side of the Pennines. That's John with her. He's got a bit of time off as well. Or they may go to Whitby, that paradise for artists with its quaint buildings, narrow streets, busy harbour and ruined abbey above, to complete a picture of old world charm. Johnny and Rose prefer walking to cycling, and they'll probably tramp the hills and dales around Dent, a lovely little township set in the midst of glorious Dentdale. Certainly Yorkshire has scenery to equal anything Lancashire can offer, and Rose and John will enjoy it to the full. They may get as far as Sedbur. Just compare the idea of being brought up here with the back streets of Salford or Bradford. Here is a green freshness which rejoices the heart. And then there's Wharfdale, as pretty as a picture. And I wonder how many pictures and how many poems have been inspired by this lovely day. Many old customs survive in Yorkshire. In Ripon, for instance, where the hornblower, following in the steps of the famous Wakeman, still sounds the curfew at 9 p.m. Mr. Tom Hawley hasn't missed a night for over 20 years, and when he's finished, he sells picture postcards of himself. Oh, why they've got a good head for business up north, you know. But whether they have a quiet holiday or not, one thing is certain, they must listen to the band. spot to be in, and to many a Yorkshireman in faraway countries, the sound of this song brings his memory home again with a bang. Ilkley has, to a certain extent, become urbanised, but that could never be said of the magnificent Vale of Pickering. Here is some of the most pleasing country in England, and Rose and Johnny will most certainly go there on one of their walking tours. The typical Yorkshire village of Levisham stands at the top of the hill. Yorkshire has many lovely villages with their own personalities. Personalities very different, but still Yorkshire. Contrast the grey stone of Sledburn in the heart of the fells, and the old world charm of Ripley with its market cross and the stocks beneath. But Yorkshire has something which Lancashire can never have. The city of York. The great minster is still under repair and it looks down on the narrow lanes of the shambles and the fascinating street names which are so much a feature of the cathedral city. York is like no other city in the whole world. Magnificent, quiet and unchanging. Well, that's it. That's Yorkshire and Lancashire for you. Both with industry, both with squalor, both with beauty. So alike in many respects, so different in others. Nowadays, the Wars of the Roses are fought out in peaceful amity, except for six days every year. When Hutton gets set, the Lancashire faces fall. But if it's Washbrook, aye, then it's a different story, all right. Hey, what's this? On your holidays again? Well, what's the trouble? Here's Tattersall again, then moving in from the Kirkstall Lane end, he bowls to Hutton, well up to him, and Hutton cover drives it handsomely there, past Washbrook for four rounds.
Tattersall again to Hutton. He turned him to leg and he's out. A magnificent catch at short leg by Ike. Hutton out. A grand innings, but these Lancashire bowlers kept him playing all. She's a lassie from Lancashire. Just a lassie from Lancashire. She's a lassie that I love dear. there it is. Wherever you are, you dream of home. Whether it be Lancashire or Yorkshire, well, that one's the best. And very right and proper too.